everybody. Joe Pasillo from the front line with Joe and Joe. And once more, let us go into the breach. And into the breach is where you're going. When you start talking about the black radicals of the 1960s, here's one. Here's one. Angela Davis. I've said on this show a million times and nothing makes my, nothing warms my heart more that when a leftist, particularly a radical leftist like this one, okay, starts to squirm, doesn't know what to say. Check this out. Angela Davis, all I got to say to you is this. You a white girl. Any idea what you're looking at? That is a list of the passengers on the Mayflower. <laughs> no, I can't believe this. <laughs> no. <laughs> My ancestors did not come here on the Mayflower. You... Yes, they did, Angela. They came on the Mayflower. Your ancestors are white English people. Keep rolling. Your ancestors <laughs> came no. on the Mayflower. No, no, no. You no. are descended <laughs> no, no, no. from one of the 100. You could live in denial all you want, and I know this is hard for you to process because you've been a black radical, not just a radical, a black radical your whole life. Well, guess what? You just find out, you white girl. And one people who sailed on the Mayflower. Oof. Oof is right. That's a little bit too much <laughs> to deal with right now. Did you ever in your wildest dreams think that you may have descended from people who laid Never. The foundation. Never. For this country. <laughs> never. Never. So I wonder, I wonder how she's going to process this, Angela Davis. Okay, if you're just joining us, Joe Pasillo at the front line with Joe and Joe. Angela Davis just found out she's a white girl. Okay? And she's been railing against white people her whole life and white oppression and everything else. There's a couple things I want to bring up. There's a lot you could talk about. We could go on for hours about this radical. Okay? Two things I want to bring up. Number one is reparations. I did a video a couple weeks ago. You could check it out about uh, our, my response to reparations is, hell no, I ain't paying. Okay. And one of the things I brought up is, what do you do with people who are African American? Okay. But also they're descended from white slave owners. Okay. And one person came to mind in particular, what do you do with Kamala Harris? Okay. Whose ancestor was white and a slave owner. What do you do with uh, Angela Davis now? Because she's a white woman. Her people came over on the Mayflower. She has to pay reparations to black people too. Or does she get less reparations because she's partly black and partly white? I wonder how that's going to work exactly. But again, nothing makes me happier. Or one of the things that makes me happiest in life is when a leftist squirms and doesn't know what to say. So sure, you've got a lot to process, woman. Because guess what? You just found out you a white girl. Now, the other thing is this. I just want to point out one tidbit of why people like this, Angela Davis, should never be listened to. She went all over the world. She went to all the communist countries. She went to the Soviet Union. She went to Cuba. She All over the place. In America, she railed against the prison system, railed against the fact that people were in jail unjustly. Okay, But she's a communist. And communists don't really care about certain groups of people. They only care about the people they care about. And everybody else can go to hell. Everybody else can rot in prison. So I just want to point this out about um, Alexander Solzhenitsyn and, uh, and political prisoners in socialist countries. And Solzhenitsyn argued in a speech, uh, this was back in 1975 before the AFL-CIO in New York City, that Davis was derelict in having failed to support prisoners in various socialist countries around the world, given her strong opposition to this prison system in the United States. Now, as an example, he said a group of Czechoslovak prisoners had appealed to Davis for support, which Solzhenitsyn said she declined. In 1972, Jiri Pelikan had written an open letter asking her to support Czechoslovak prisoners, which Davis had refused, believing that the Czechoslovak prisoners were undermining the Hussak government and that Pelikan, in exile in Italy, was attacking his own country. Now, here's the kicker. According to Solzhenitsyn, in response to concerns about Czechoslovak prisoners being persecuted by the state, remember, this is a woman who railed against the United States prison system, Davis responded that they deserve what they get. Let them remain in prison. And finally, when Alan Dershowitz, who also asked Davis to support a number of imprisoned refuseniks in the USSR, that she declined saying they're all Zionist, fascists, and opponents of socialism. Now, again, we could go on for hours about this hypocrite, this evil woman, 
okay, Angela Davis, supported uh, her guns back in the day, supported um, a, you know, these guys on January 6th, they talk about an insurrection. She gave her guns to a group of people who went into a courthouse in California and killed a judge and killed three other people for which she stood trial, all right? Eventually, she had to stand trial under California law as aiding and abetting. She skated on that, okay? She skated on everything in her life. You want to talk about, if you want to see the face of privilege in America, look on the left side of your screen. That woman right there, Angela Davis. She is supposedly black, but now we found out, you white woman, all right? Uh, she's a lesbian. She's a civil, quote unquote, Black Panther civil rights advocate from the 1960s. She's a, the epitome, the epitome of privilege in America. And she wants to get up there and she wants to talk about America being evil. She wants to talk about our prison system when she refused to help those prisoners in um, in, in communist countries. Really? This is the woman we have to, this is the, a woman that somehow, some way gets put up on a pedestal. And here's the key. Hillary Clinton will look at her as a hero and she'll look at us as deplorable.